Welcome to Cues and Views, first on the web for collecting English billiard cues. Hello. Today I want to talk to you about an archetypal collector's cue. Or is it an archetypal player's cue? Or is it just a famous cue? It's almost become legendary as a cue. Am I exaggerating? Well, maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. That cue is up to you to decide. What do you think of this cue? This cue is the famous Burroughs and Watts Burwatt Champion cue. Burwatt Champion cue. Just in case anybody's struggling with my accent, Burwatt B U R W A T, short for Boroughs and Watts of London. Famous cue maker, promoter of matches, Billy Table Maker, an extraordinary fam extraordinarily famous company. Boroughs and Watts patented this cue design in 1896, and as far as records seem to show, were still making them well into the late 1950s and still selling them right up until their company ceased trading and certain aspects of it were bought out by Riley's right up until 1968 so that's 1968 the last time you could actually buy from Burroughs and Watts a Burwatt Champion queue. Can you imagine how many queues, how many Burwatt Champion queues were sold throughout the entire history of this queue? Me neither. But I would tell you this, it's a significant number. Of those cues, how many are still out there? How many are being used? Well, I've got to tell you, at the current time of putting this video together, I have a few. But by no means a significant inroad into the numbers that are out there. It's said that Alex Higgins who recently passed away, Alex Higgins really rated the Burwatt champion as a very, very special cue for him to play with. This information became widely known when he had an advert, a campaign on radio, mentioned it in an interview. He was looking for a cue. If anybody had a Burwatt champion, could they send him one? And he would use it and he would win the world championships again with it. This was obviously after 1972 when Alex won his first World Snooker Championship. Now Alex Higgins valued Burroughs and Watts cues quite highly. There's footage available of Alex using a Manock cue, JP Manock cue. Um, these were made by Burroughs and Watts, pairwood shafted cue most often. Totally different really to a Burwatt champion, but a Burroughs and Watts cue. And Alex seemed to really rate Burroughs and Watts cues. Now... Over the next few weeks and months, around 200 Burwatt Champion cues were sent to Alex. And Alex was famous for altering cues, tapping in pieces of lead into the butt to alter the weight and balance of a cue, shortening cues, slimming them down. Years and years later, Warren King, uh, Canadian, uh, Australian sorry, um, snooker player and friend of Alex, they were playing cards at uh, Alex's house in Sheffield. They decided to go for a game of snooker together. Warren says, oh, I have no cue. I should imagine he said, oh, I have no cue. Not being from Yorkshire as I am. And Alex said, don't worry, babe. Go to the cupboard, get yourself one. We'll go down to the club, get a cue you like. So Warren King, his legend has it that Warren King opened the cupboard door. Cues virtually fell out. In different stages of disrepair, chopped in half, joints and splices. I mean, many of them not actually Burwatt champions. Some of them cues that people thought were Burwatt champions, other Burroughs and Watts cues. Anyway, all sorts of cues in this cupboard. Some bent, some straight, some jointed. Absolute, an array of different cues kind of fell out towards him. He found a cue that was good and straight and uh, said to Alex, I'll take this one. They went down. Had a session of snooker playing probably for £20 a frame, who knows, who knows. Maybe into the wee small hours. I'm not sure, but I think Alex said to Warren King, you can keep the queue if you want. This is how 
Alex Wars lived his life, as we know, day by day, and therefore if somebody liked it, probably gave it to him. This all built the legend of the Burwatt Champion into a new level of people seeking them for themselves. It's a little known fact that Ray Reardon used Burwatt Champions and he had one stolen from an exhibition that he was doing and never got the cue back, but he got one very similar to it and played well with that cue. So Burwatt Champions, they are a very significant and quite famous cue. So what makes the Burwatt Champion so special? You decide again, look, look at this illustration, you decide. These are attractive cues with an interesting design. I believe descended from, in design terms, the Cecil Harverson cue. Um, here are a couple of illustrations of Cecil Harverson cues made from one of them definitely from a, the correct era to be a predecessor to the Burwatt Champion and the other one possibly as the Burwatt Champion run had already started. Don't forget these cues were made in 1896 and you would expect them often, the oldest ones, to have quite a thick butt, a billiard style taper to the butt. But many of them don't. Maybe this was unique to the very design in the first instance. A bit like Jack Mannock's cue had its own design, its own taper, its own style. Making cues slimmer like this is certainly well known around 1890, as you can see from Peel cues. So, and Stevenson cues of a similar era. Certainly Stevenson cues from 1912, with the 1016 break mentioned on them, are often very similar to this. But 1896 and 1912, we're talking 16 years difference. Interesting. Anyway, these are a few of my Burwatt Champion cues. Have a look, see what you think. Perhaps you will be inspired to seek a Burwatt Champion cue. But these cues that I have vary in length. I have one, as you will see, 60 inches long, and the shortest is just under 57 inches long. Here are five of my Burwatt Champion cues. You will notice that the facing splice, this is what we call the facing splice, this section here, from here to here. It's different colours on different cues. This one, the two materials used almost blend to a point where it's hard to tell where one starts and the other begins. There's where the veneer starts. Now I refer to these as veneers and these are splices, these areas are splices. One interesting thing to note on Burwatt Champions, every single Burwatt Champion has the same serial number. Some people think that they're sequentially numbered. They're not. They're all the same. Some people believe that Burwatt Champions never appeared in Maple. I think this is a throwback to the fact that the ye old ash cue made by Burroughs and Watts never appears in anything other than ash. But Burwatt Champion cues do appear in Maple, as you can see. This one has a slightly faded badge. This means that the print, the lettering on the badge, uh, has become sort of detached over the years. Quite a sturdy, f firm, playable cue. If you watch the splice and veneer, the shaft, which uh, sorry, the butt, which is made out of Macassar ebony, although quite dark, and eventually you'll see the beginnings of the maple shaft. Different from ash, in the sense that it's not got as many lines on it, streaks on it, chevrons, whatever you want to call them, arrows. It's very much a much plainer shaft in colour. Not to be mistaken for Hornbeam, which we'll talk about at some later date. A Maple Burwatt Champion cue. The rarest Burwatt Champion I've got, I genuinely believe, is very, very hard to come by. It's the Canadian Burwatt Champion that I got, literally from a gentleman in Canada. Um, an amazing find. These are the kind of things that make the cue collecting hobby absolutely exciting to me because you don't know something exists until someone pulls it out of a case and offers it to you. This cue, the gentleman sent me photographs from Canada. I wasn't even sure that the cue was genuine at the time. This is no reflection on him as a seller. I mean, for all we knew, he could have been a one off. It may only be one, it may be a sample from, you know, the from Burroughs and Watts sent out to Canada for a company to possibly buy. Who knows? It's the only one I've ever seen. If you know where there are others, by all means, let me know. 
but I, uh, there is something unique about this queue um, and I really really like it. So the Burwatt Champion queue, one of my favourites. Not the most rare queue, but certainly one with a very interesting history and brought to a new generation as an interesting queue by Alex.